What's up, guys? Happy Saturday morning to everybody. It is cold. Like yesterday, 70 degrees. Today, 40. But I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, I'm just going to cover, like, today, we're just going to talk about little crap. Because a lot of people wonder, like, why the hell did my fuse holder melt? That's a good question, guys. So let's get into it. More than likely, your fuse ho holder melted because you have a bad connection right there. Um, me, I typically, and they work when they work, but anything that you stick, like, your wire in, you know, after you cut the casing off and you tighten the Allen head bolt down, like the connection on the amplifier, I hate those. And uh, fuse holders that have those are pretty bad, but... Even batteries, I hate them. And a lot of times, you know, things loosen up from the wire wiggling back and forth from vibration, you know, driving down the road and, and stuff. And especially if you don't tighten them real tight to begin with, because, you know, you got plastic with like a metal piece just kind of like bolted to the plastic underneath. When you're trying to crank that little set screw down, you're afraid you're going to break the plastic. So you don't get it super tight and you get a bad connection there over time where it corrodes, and that's why you should be melting. And, you know, I've had this happen to me. Not that same instance. I use lugs on everything. Like, when I got my battery bars, I wanted them with boats so I could use lugs. But, uh, yeah, I when I had the trouble with the Jeep at Ruckus, I changed the fuse on the side of the road, and I didn't have proper tool to get in there and tighten the, the boat up that holds the fuse and the lug and everything. And I didn't check it when I got home. And one morning I was driving, I smelt smoke, pulled over, opened the back door and the fuse holder had melted. So yeah, I mean, I screw up too, guys. I'm not perfect at all this. Uh, and I'm still learning every day, like yesterday's video. Me trying to figure out why I had so many different power levels at the same impedance. But whole nother topic but yeah check all your connections if you're melting a wire at one end the other the fuse holder you have a bad connection somewhere unless unless you know you're doing like one knot power wire and you have a four gauge ground wire then that four gauge ground wire it's yeah it's gonna melt but typically, if you got everything done right and you got something getting hot at one point, you have a bad connection there. And I don't know why. I see this that question pop up in groups like daily. And connection points are like really critical because that's where your current is going through. And if the current's trying to go through there and you shut the door or take the door from wide open and, you know, you just close it to a crack... Things is really going to heat up there. Um, wire, wire, wire. Uh, man. You know, there's the old debate on CCA wire versus OFC wire. At the end of the day, OFC wire is a lot better. Will CCA work for you? Absolutely. When I built this Jeep, I really did it on a budget. That's why this whole enclosure is pine plywood. And I'm not talking the pretty sanded stuff. I'm talking the shit that you can see like where they just cut a knot hole out of a, you know, and slapped it down. They had a big divot there. That That's in this. Uh, but being on a budget, I did all CCA wire. And I, I really get meticulous on a lot of things. So I had to find the table that told me how much current that the CCA wire could hold over how long. And I kind of measured the old Jeep here, you know, and I rounded it up to 20 foot. Nowhere near 20 foot, but I rounded it up to 20 foot. I did the math, and <clears throat> I had two runs of positive from front to back. And then I did, on the amplifiers that I put in here, I did use dual inputs with the CCA. I did do that. But, uh, you know, that was plenty. The two runs of CCA one, I, it was plenty because it was like almost, well, actually it was more than double what my alternator at the time was able to put out. 
So a lot of people get the misconception on that run from front to back. If all your batteries in the back, like I see people, they have two or three alternators and they got eight damn runs of positive from front to back. Don't matter. Most of them do OFC, but all your all your wiring for from front to back is what your alternators put out, guys. Your amplifiers ain't pulling shit off that run. I mean, they're not going to make the alternator put out more than it's putting out. The alternator is reading the battery and putting out juice for the battery. So, back to the CCA. It's fine if you use the right uh, amount of wire for the amperage and go over. Because I'll be honest, guys, I went from CCA to OFC in here. My numbers did not change at all. None. Like, my numbers stayed exactly the same. What I did do is I added, uh, when I put the OFC in, I did two runs of two-out welding cable from front to back. I added two runs of ground from the alternators to the back. That helped me more than anything. Didn't get my numbers up, but my battery bank in the back charged a hell of a lot quicker. So I highly recommend that. That does help with faster charging time. But uh, when I see these guys that have like eight runs, I'll just look at the wire and, you know, I kind of know that a big wire like that is usually measured in 50-foot runs. And I'm not talking the measure. Yeah, it's full 50-foot, but they measured the resistance and the amperage and voltage they actually measure a lot of it in voltage that it can handle in a 50 foot run most of you guys are using 12 feet unless you have like a tahoe suburban then you might be using 15 but i'd say the most common wire length used in front to back is 12 foot um that drastically increases what that wire can handle you know, because anytime you add length, you add resistance. So, anytime you shorten it up from where it's measured at a 50 foot, you're drastically increasing what the wire's capabilities are. Anyway, I, I just scratch my head when I see these guys have like eight, run of, eight runs of positive back there because they'll have two alternators. Two. I tell you this now, guys. My uh, two-watt welding cable, OFC, it... it, it there's not an alternator. Uh, the biggest alternator I've ever seen is like a 400 amp. And one run of that, I handle that 400 amp alternator and more. So that would kind of give you, you know, at the, uh, it'd probably handle it at 50 foot length. But at the 12 foot length that I'm using, it'd take that 400 amp all day. It'd, probably, it'd do 600 amp. One run of two watt OFC welding cable. I have two runs in front of back. Do I need another one? No. My, I mean, I'll demo this thing hard for a long period of time, you know, with both alternators turned on, and I will, like, go under the hood and touch the wire. It's cold. I touch it at the back. It's cold. If there was any problem where, you know, I had too much going through it, it would be at least warm. So that would kind of give you an idea. You know, you don't need all that wire. You just need to wire from what your alternators are capable of putting out. That's all you need. Now, I'm not saying if you have a 630 amp alternator that you only wire for 630 amp. No. To be safe, you're going to wire for 8, 900 amp. That, that's just, you always go a little over. You never go right on or under. But wire, yeah. I mean, dude, that's your bread and butter of the car. You only, but you only need to wire what your alternators can put out for them runs. I, like I said, I benefited, got faster charging time from adding the grounds there, but that's all, all I need. You know, I do do maintenance. I go back and check. I've started doing it pretty much monthly now. I'll get under the hood. I'll check every connection, make sure there's no corrosion, make sure everything's nice and snug down. In the back, I make sure everything's nice and snug down, no corrosion. On my C Max, I will take every amplifier cable that's bolted to it, and I'll just check to make sure nothing's loose. And even at the amplifiers, it don't hurt to grab your old Allen wrench and, like, you know, give everything a little, you know, make sure they're all good. But 
have I found things loose? Yes. I found some that were questionable, but it just pays to go back and do that. But guys, do yourself a favor. When you're buying wire, I recommend just getting OFC out the gate because I bought CCA and wound up upgrading a year later. Uh, and I, it would have saved me money if I would have just done the OFC off the rip. Is welding cable fine? Dude, welding cable is perfect. It, it is perfectly fine. Is sky high wire fine? It definitely is. GP audio, their wire is fine. You know, uh, man, stay away from these Amazon and eBay brands, but as long as you get a branded name wire, you're going to be fine. Um, but I still, I'll, I'll probably never replace the welding cable. It runs from front to back in here. Just because it's routed through questionable, you know, the motor compartment and everything. And that's your welding cable is far superior to car audio wire. It don't flex as good, but where it's superior is it's heat, oil resistant, heat resistant, you know, heat resistant to an extent. Uh, way better than car audio wire. Chemical resistant, definitely. Uh, the casing on it is more resistant to cuts and gouges and everything like that. It is far superior in them categories. So I prefer welding cable running from front to back of a car. That's my go-to just because of how tough it is. A lot of guys run the cable under their car. That is where welding cable would shine, baby. But going through the engine department, it, it definitely helps there. So... Choose your stuff wisely and think when you do things, guys. Uh, your connections, that's the lifeline of your system, you know. So you really want to make sure that's on point. If, you, if you're if you on a budget and you have to buy uh, CCA wire, don't sweat it, guys. You know, uh, buy it and, and kind of do your math uh, to find out what it'll carry. And do your runs from front to back in it and definitely use good heat shrink and a good crimper. And by good crimper, I don't mean you have to have that old hydraulic thing that it damn near takes two people to operate. You know, like you got to hold the body and pump it while your homeboy's over here holding the lug and the wire and the jaws for you to crimp it. You don't have to have one of them, guys. Most of my connection, I have one of them crimpers. And I use it if I'm under the hood or in the back of a car where I can't get the wire out, lay it on the ground. But I use a hammer crimper. It's just a little thing. You slide up, you put the lug wire in while it's on the ground, and you smack it with a big-ass hammer. I will smack it on one side, roll it over, and smack it on the other, and I've never had an issue. Never. And after you crimp, use good heat shrink so you can't get a lot of moisture in there. A big problem with CCA wire is it will corrode. And if you get a, a bad lug or a bad lug connection, like your crimp ain't great, and you don't use heat shrink on it, it will corrode. And I've, that's the only, I didn't have a problem with it. I've seen people with problems with it. And uh, I've also seen bad corrosion happen with uh, OFC wire at a crimp connection that never had heat shrink put on it. Because most heat shrink, if you buy good heat shrink, I'm not talking the branded stuff, you know, that's got your favorite logo here. I'm talking the shit that uh, almost has like a glue in it when you heat it up and it shrinks down, it presses that clear shit out. That's a good sealer right there. Uh, that actually helps keep moisture and everything out. But I, I've seen a OFC crimp that didn't have, never have heat shrink on it. And dude, like... This far up under the wire casing, it was rock solid with corrosion. And that connection, I don't know how old it was, but it could have been saved with a good piece of heat shrink. So, yeah, don't take that stuff for granted. I mean, it, you need it on CCA, you need it on OFC. That is the one place that tinned OFC wire really comes in handy. It's nice, but... uh Anyway, that's all I got this morning, man. That's some big questions I keep seeing is the whole debate on the runs from the alternator to the back. You know, you don't need 20 runs. Uh, and the differences in wire and your piss poor connections that cause you to melt stuff, guys. You know, I've seen amplifiers melt because that's where the bad connection was at, right at the amp inputs. But anyway, peace out, guys. Have a great day. And as always, base on.